This video is going to take us through a brief example using the Rotman Lens Designer. We're going to use the microstrip configuration, a frequency of 16 gigahertz, a bandwidth of 4 gigahertz, the material is RT Doride, it's going to be less than 15 lambda or 30 by 35 centimeter square area that we use, the scan angle will be 20 degrees, there will be 7 beams and 16 elements. So let's start by adding a description. Moving over to the description tab, I'm going to call this KU Band Lens. And let's go back to the physical properties tab. We're going to use a 50 ohm impedance. We're going to keep the lens type as a microstrip. We're going to keep the focal contour shape as circular. We're going to maintain an autofocal length. We're going to put the focal ratio at 1.1, but we're going to adjust this later on in the problem. We're going to keep a loss tangent of 0 0.0005. The dielectric constant is 2.33. The thickness is going to be 0 0.508 millimeters. We're going to keep the density of 2.1 grams per centimeter cubed. For the metallization, we're going to maintain the metallization of copper, so 5.8 e to the 7 Siemens per meter, and a thickness of 0.1 millimeters. The absorber has a dielectric constant of 2.5 and a conductivity of 1 semen per meter. Now that we've adjusted the physical properties, let's move to the electrical properties tab. For our lens, we're going to adjust the center frequency to 16 gigahertz with a bandwidth of 4 gigahertz. The element spacing is going to be 0 0.5 wavelengths. The beam excitation is going to be uniform. The aperture distribution, we're going to set it to manual. The max scan angle is 20 degrees. The alpha ratio is going to be 0.8. The number of beams is going to be 7. The max port size is going to be 2. The flare angle, 11 degrees. The array contour is going to have 16 elements with a max port size of two wavelengths and another flare angle of 11 degrees. For the sidewalls, we're going to have the contour curvature set to 0.75. The max port size is going to be 0 0.96 wavelengths and the flare angle is going to be 12 degrees. Now let's move on to the transmission line properties tab. We're going to uncheck the box next to calculate line geometry. The line type is going to be routed. The spread factor is 1. The intermediate position factor is going to be 0.5. The length factor 1.1. The terminating position factor is 5. The terminal spacing is going to be 20 millimeters. The terminal distance factor is 0 0.53. The terminal line curvature is 1. The terminal spacing will be 15 millimeters. The terminal distance factor is 0.5. The terminal line curvature is 0.5. And the terminal position shift factor is going to maintain at 0. So now we're going to analyze the performance of the lens. We're going to go to Tools, Plot, Array Factor, and Tools, Plot, Beam Ports, Beam to Array Phase Errors. From the Calculate Beam Port, we're going to select All. This will display the phase error for each of the beam ports. So now we're going to click back to the physical properties tab to give us access to the focal ratio. So by adjusting this parameter while minimizing the error reported by the phase error plot, you'll produce a focal ratio of about 1.0373. I'm going to minimize my two plots so we can see the resulting lens. To determine the array factor on the individual ports, you can actually hover over each port. 
you can go to the electrical properties tab and click on view. Uh, first we're going to switch the user to find, then we're going to click on edit. So by default, here's the magnitude and phase of each of the excitations. I can come over and zero all. And I can come over to entry number four and modify to something like one volt. And click OK. And now let me switch back to my array factor. And this is now displaying the array factor for port four having magnitude of one volt and all other ports set to zero. Let's go back into edit, zero all. I'm gonna set port one to one volt and port seven to one volt. And now we're seeing two plus or minus 20 degree beams. So now further tuning can be done in this design, but for now, let's minimize the graph. One other thing you can do is export the S parameters. Let's choose an output directory. So from here you can choose which beam ports to export, the min frequency, the maximum frequency, and the number of samples for each frequency. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to export the file and import it into XFDTD version 7. So there are two options I can use. I can export as an SAT file, or I can export as a 2DS format. So first I'm going to export as a 2DS format. We'll also export the lens as an SAT file. Now let's open up XFDTD. We'll go to File, Import, CAD Files, RLDExample.sat. Here's our geometry. Another way to do this is actually using an import script. So I'm going to open up a new instance of XFDTD. And from here, we're going to actually import a script. This script is available from Remcom support. So if you have any interest in looking at this, please email support at remcom.com. When I execute the script, it's going to prompt me for my 2DS file and click OK. When the script prompts you for the second time, enter the same file name, click open. And now you're going to manually enter the number of beam ports, array ports, upper dummy ports, and lower dummy ports so that XFDTD can automatically insert the ports into the project. Looking at the two projects, the main difference is that when you import using the script, it's going to automatically set up all of the ports. This would have to be done manually if you export using the SAT file. The other difference is that the geometry will also include material properties, which it will not if it's exported as an SAT file. For more information, please contact sales at remcom.com.